physical activity. So you've had weeks and weeks and weeks of learning about nutrition, learning about different cultures, and just as Dr. Chandler discussed, now is the time to move in the whole scheme of physical activity. Uh, physical activity, not physical education, but physical activity can really be accumulated in a whole bunch of different forms. But many of you are going to be going out to interns, uh, internships next uh, semester, so I want to give you in three quick nightly meetings some ideas of how you can implement meaningful, developmentally appropriate physical activity to, this, to the individuals that you'll be teaching, that you'll be working with, that you'll be providing support and mentoring. Um, a show of hands, how many of you have an idea of the level that you want to go to, age level that you would like to do your internship at? How many have no idea? Okay. Um, how many are probably thinking school age or younger? Can you hear me in the back? Okay. All right. All right. So tonight we're going to go over the basics of physical education. And these, these basics you'll turn into physical activity um, strategies that you can use. Our, our very, I don't know how to, do I just go to the computer and yeah. tap on it? No, that's fine. Okay, so one of the things, why do we want to be physically active? Let's just open that conversation. Turn and look at somebody right next to you. You have to scoot together, holler, whatever you have to do. Why is physical activity important? Why is physical activity important? Okay, you have about 20 seconds to talk this over with someone right next to you. Can you engage him? We're going to do a lot of interaction. I, I am not the typical professor that stands and talks, and, but I'm going to stand and talk, but you're going to be engaged in a lot of activity uh, cognitively at the tables tonight. So give me one, one reason. Fitness to feel better about yourself? Sure, just self-esteem. When you move, you feel better about yourself. Who else has another one? It reduces stress. It reduces stress. That's huge. Health. Health. Your health. What about our health? Okay, it can improve our health. Development with the bone. Oh, absolutely. Physical development. Yeah, the, the, the impact against our bones, especially in our growing years, uh, research shows that it increases the bone density by having kids jump off of uh, boxes and, and get that, in, uh, that, that stress on their joints. So the, they do bone scans to find out what really happens with that. Well, we also have recently linked the increase of physical activity to increased academic performance. Okay, so this is like everything I wanted to know while I was a student. Because the more physically active you are, the more times you cross the midline of your body. So everyone right now, just cross the midline of your body. Everybody, midline of your body. Okay, take your legs, cross your legs. Keep going. And time. All right, just that crossing increases <laughs> oh, increases reflexes, but it also increases the cognitive functioning in your brain. So right before you take that exam, or if you're starting to feel dozy, or you want to just chat with that neighbor next to you, do something. Take your arms, stretch them. Remember this thing where you take your arms straight out? Everybody take your arms straight out, clasp them, roll them, okay? Any of that, that helps stimulate the brain. So we're finding a lot of support that says, hey, being physically active helps academically because it's like putting miracle Grow in your brain. And it's instant results. Next week, you're going to have some homework. I posted um, some articles from active, activelivingresearch.org. John Rady, we'll talk a little bit more about him next week. But he really shows why we need physical activity. And especially the groups that we're working with, they're going to need a lot of physical activity as well. So there's a huge need. There's a huge benefit of being physically active. You know, we get here super early in the morning. We want to take that first parking spot. Now, how many, like when we park in the North 40 and we walk all the way in, you actually kind of feel a little bit better? You know, it's unless you're late. Um, <laughs> but you, you start to get the, the benefits right away. So let's talk a little bit about movement um, co uh, components and skill development. Anybody in here coach? Coach a sport. 
Okay, anybody ever teach preschool, elementary school, volunteer in classrooms, volunteer at rec centers? I just kind of trying to do a quick assessment where what kind of folks we have in here. Okay, who's never really worked with teaching a game to folks? Teaching an activity, teaching a game? Okay, so I'm missing about a third of us that don't have a response. Um, I'll tell you what, we're gonna go through this and whatever questions we have, we'll come back. We're gonna go into the gym, uh, like Dr. Chandler said, we're gonna do a power walk down to the gym to increase our moderate to vigorous physical activity, our MVPA, moderate to vigorous physical activity. We'll learn more about that next week. Um, we're going to engage in physical activity tonight that's going to reinforce everything on these slides. Nothing strenuous, just fun. You're going to hear a lot of laughter, but there's also a huge learning component. <laughs> Anybody ever play dodgeball? Yeah. Okay. Only about a third of the class played dodgeball. How many played dodgeball? Just tell me. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay. How many of you, close your eyes, close your eyes. How many of you just despise the game of dodgeball? Because you were always hit first or... Okay, close, uh, put your hands down, close, open your eyes. So we'll talk about dodgeball tonight. We're not playing dodgeball in our class, but we're gonna learn more about it, all right? Okay, so movement co uh, components and skill development. A couple key things. You have these slides on titanium. How many of you read chapter three for tonight? Okay, that's a good response. <laughs> By next week, you need to have chapter three and chapter four. Super short chapters. Um, just have three and four. They're in your reader. Does everybody have the reader? Yes. Okay, they're in the reader. The PowerPoint slides are set for both, but the slides are only small pieces of what's really in the chapter. Okay, so make sure that you have, have that read and we'll be in, in good case. All right, so basically what chapter three does and what we're gonna talk about tonight is just really basic movement components. Right? I'm going to help you figure out different ways of moving, moving with your body, different ways of getting people engaged. You first have to be engaged yourself to learn how to engage others. And then we're going to just barely touch on the developmental levels of manipulative skills. And all this will make sense in a few minutes. And then um, we're going to go to the gym and we're going to actually participate play, we're going to do some juggling, we're going to do some tossing, we're going to do some tagging, some dodging, some fleeing, some chasing, everything but it forward rolls. All right, this is super important, super tiny. You're not going to really be able to see it, but the very first square is locomotor skills, non-locomotor skills, and manipulatives. Locomotor skills, who thinks that they know what a locomotor skill is? Everybody stand up real quick, locomotor skill. Everybody stand up. Oh boy, everybody's taller than me now. <laughs> Take one, slide once to the one side, doesn't matter which side. Go back to the other side. Go forward a little bit. Go backwards a little bit. Okay, that's a locomotor skill. Think of a, a train, a locomotive. It's a locomotive is moving forward. It's moving from one spot to another spot. Okay, non-locomotor. Show me some bending, twisting, some bending and twisting. Show me any type of bending, twisting, stretching, okay, stretching arms, any type of stretching. Everybody's engaged in stretching. Thank you. All right, that's a non-locomotor skill. That's done in place. That's done in place. All right, now everybody has a pretend ball in their hand, a tennis ball. Take the tennis ball, just toss and catch. Toss and catch. Close your eyes to toss and catch. <laughs> Doing a pretty good job catching it? <laughs> All right, have a seat. That's called manipulatives. So we have three fundamental mo mo um, movement skills. Locomotor, moving from place to place. Non-locomotor, in one spot, and I'm gonna give you some notes in just a few seconds that'll have all this on, on, on there. And then manipulatives, throwing, catching, kicking, trapping, like trapping a soccer ball, uh, any type of, anything that has a manipulative in it. Then we have to worry about body awareness. So once we know about fundamental movement skills, then we have to have something about our body awareness. Anybody ever randomly like walk and just actually bump into something? I, I do that all the time. Um, 
body awareness is being aware of where you're at. It's being aware of how you twist, how much movement you do so that you don't hurt yourself. If you go out and I ask you to sprint all the way to the Kinesis building right now, and you haven't done any physical activity in a long time, um, let's say we just got off break, we were told not to do any physical activity, and then I asked you to sprint, chances are we'd probably get hurt. So you have to have body awareness to know, okay, I can jog down there, but I can't sprint down there. So body awareness is really uh, figuring out how to increase force when you're throwing a ball, about transferring weight. The, the force from a, throwing a ball does not come from your arms, it comes from stepping and transferring weight. There's a lot of muscles in your legs and that's what increases force. It's also about balancing um, and making shapes. We're gonna do a lot of shapes tonight. Okay, and then space awareness. Right here, this is our general space. This whole classroom is our general space. Where you're sitting is your personal space. So when you're working with children, you want to make sure that they have their own personal space. If you go and observe a class, you'll see that kindergartners sometimes bump into each other. Pre-K, sometimes they bump into each other. Their balance is changing so quick. With first, first grade, about six-year-old boys, Sometimes they just fall out of their seats because their balance are um, they're totally changing so quickly. And, and that's a true story. Boys develop a little bit slower and they kind of, I thought a, a little boy in my class was messing around and the teacher goes, no, he's just growing so fast that he just loses control. <laughs> um, and he was a really good kid, so I knew that it wasn't behavior. So space awareness, we're going to learn about different directions. Uh, making Dr. Chandler like move that camera, so I'm keeping her engaged as well. We're going to learn about levels. Uh, everybody stand up again. Reach up as high as you can. Reach up as high, as high as you can. Make yourself as tiny as you can right now. How tiny can you make yourself? Okay, now make yourself into the letter of your first name. Make yourself into the letter of your first name. A P? Have a seat. <laughs> okay, you know what? This is a 400 level class. There's no laughing in here. All right? There's no having fun. All right? You can just sense when people move, they have fun. For the most part, most people have fun when they move. And we want to get the clientele that we're going to work with moving in non-threatening in a non-threatening environment so you need to make that environment emotionally safe and physically safe as well all right so then we have qualities of movement and that's going to be effort of force and all that kind of stuff and then relationship how the body relates to um, contrasting movements and stuff beyond what what i'm going to teach you again i have basically one night to teach you about movement skills. Next week is about exercise and fitness components. And the third week is ra wrapping it all up together. We lost a Monday on one of the holidays. So I'm gonna breeze through these. We talked about these. How many of these, how many locomotor movements do you think there are? Show me with your hands, how many locomotor movements? Here's a clue that's at least two hands worth. How many locomotor movements? We know there's walking, because I just had you walk. You kind of did a slide, so that's two. Take a stab. Show me how many you think. Okay, I see eight. I see there's two hands, at least two hands. That's your clue. Eight, six, ten. You're going for it. Nine. Okay, there's seven, but some authors will say that there's eight. So it's really whichever textbook you're looking at. Um, Non-locomotor are infinite, infinite because there's stretching, there's balancing, and manipulatives, throwing, catching, kicking, trapping. And again, I'm going to give you a resource in just a second. So here's our locomotor movements. Walk, run, gallop, slide, jump, hop. Hop. How many feet do you hop with? Raise your hand if it's one or two. Show me a one or two. Everybody has to participate. A one or a two. You're hopping. Do you hop with one foot or two feet? Your grade does not depend on this right now. Just show me what you think. Show me what you think. Okay, twos, put your hands down. Ones, you are correct. The easiest way, developmentally appropriateness is with bone growth and growth plates in our body, you want to hop three times and have the, the child switch to the other foot. 
I think one of the reasons I'm so short is I used to hop all the way down to that wall, like the fence on the other side of the field on my right foot, and then my teacher would say, okay, now hop back on your left foot. I loved it. <coughs> now my parents are short. All right. <laughs> my mother's 4'9", so there's no hope right here. Hopping. Three letters. Hop on one foot, three times, switch. <coughs> Jumping. No more than 10 jumps before you switch up the activity, just for a second. You could do 10 jumps and then walk a couple steps and then 10 jumps. But we don't want to do more than 10. Sliding, you're sliding like a basketball player. Gallop, we're going to learn that tonight. Skipping, leaping. And then the rest of the slides are going to go into specific details. Here's some non-locomotor non movements. Uh, bending, turning, pushing, pulling, rising, spinning, shaking, and then some manipulatives. So we're going to touch in the gym tonight on, on each one of those main areas. When you teach, you want to help your students to identify some little small teaching cues. So besides content, I'm also going to try and implement a little bit of, of teaching strategies. Okay, so a little bit of teaching strategies, a little bit of cues that you can have help your students learn these. And we're going to do just a tad bit of assessment, but the main piece on your lesson plan for assessment is just you, basically observation. Think of yourself working with um, four-year-olds and you have them in a small play yard and you're teaching them just how to, to walk back and forth, staying in their own space bubble, their own personal space. You're going to be able to observe, are they doing that? Or do they, does Sally need a little bit more help? Apologize if there's a Sally in here. Or does Joseph need a little bit extra assistance? So observational assessment, and there's also verbal assessment. You can ask them to describe what they did or teach somebody else how to do it, even with four-year-olds. So the assessment we're using in here is going to be very, very mild, but it's enough to give you information. If you're looking to get these kids into lifetime movers, what is it that you need to do to help them become lifetime movers? <coughs> so again, body awareness, space awareness, qualities of movement, in relationships. This is contrasting movements, meaning that the arms and the legs are in opposition when you're walking or running or skipping. So that takes us to the end of our slides. Uh, I'm going to give you something called uh, movement analysis um, framework. And this movement analysis framework is a wheel that I need another set of lights turned on. Is that, that switch. the switch? Ooh. This movement analysis uh, wheel, you can actually cut out the center and then you just turn it. Uh, so if I could, could you just run and throw a couple of these down each row? Throw a couple of those down each row. And go ahead and pass these out. Just pass those down. This, this wheel basically gives you, in the middle, the locomotor, non-locomotor, and manipulatives. I'll give everyone a minute to get that out. Everybody got the sign-in sheet? Does everybody have one? Do you two back here have one? Still working on it? Okay. You have one? Some extras? Okay, anyone need one? Thank you. Okay, any extras down this side? You need a couple? All right, so look in the middle. And in the middle, again, locomotor, non locomotor, and manipulatives. Then on the outside, you start to see the, the manipulatives are the throwing, catching, kicking. The non non locomotor. I, they, they call it non-manipulative. If you want to be consistent with my language, it's going to be called non-locomotor. And that's the, the turning, transferring, uh, except for the jumping. That's, that's when I put over in locomotor. But besides that, everything else is pretty, 
pretty consistent with what we're talking about. So then you start to look at the different areas. There's effort on how the body moves, fast, slow, strong, light, uh, bounder free. And then you have directions, self space, um, up and down, forward, zigzag, low, you're walking low, walking high. All these things are going to help you when you cr you're creating your lesson plan. And when I, I say you're, you're creating a lesson plan next week, you're basically creating an activity. And I'll take you through several examples tonight. You're just uh, creating an activity that you can gather from a website. You're going to do one, one or two modifications to it, your choice. Um, and then you're going to share it with a small group next week. Okay, so it's nothing that's threatening. Um, and it's going to actually be enjoyable. And the whole idea is that we get an activity from everybody through here and then we'll scan them, put them in a PDF, post them, and they'll, you'll have a huge resource of a whole bunch of different activities. I have a template that is posted, and let's go to that template right now. template is you're going to have an age or a grade level. You're just going to have to choose one. Try to avoid five to nine year olds. Choose a five year old. Choose six year old. Okay and just kind of gear it towards that for what you know about right now. How many of you have ever had a child development class? Okay so you kind of have the parameters. Um, when you pull this off of a website whatever your activity is they'll give you a grade, um, a grade or age level. Generally a grade level. Any equipment needed, do you need hula hoops, bean bags, fleece balls? You're going to play with those tonight. Um, objective for the lesson, what is your goal for teaching and learning with this activity? What is your goal? What do you want them to learn? You want them to learn to keep in their own personal space? You want them to learn how to balance? Right? What is it that, that they can learn? An anticipatory set is a quick motivating comment that's going to get them excited and engaged. All right, everybody stand back up. Okay, so you, how many of you have uh, seen a baseball game before? Anybody ever seen a baseball game in your entire life? Who's never seen a baseball game in your entire life? Now, how many people have seen a baseball game in your entire life? Thank you. All right. What happens when that pitcher gets the ball? The, the batter comes up, they hit the ball really hard, the, batter, the pitcher gets the ball and he needs to throw it to first base. Show me how he's going to throw it to first base. Just pretend to show me how he's going to throw it to first base. Remember, he doesn't want to overthrow it or throw it too hard. So what might be the best way for him to get that ball to the first base person? Oh, oh yeah, just an easy toss. Everyone show me an easy toss. Okay, they're going to toss it to the first baseman. If the pitcher gets it really quick and they throw it overhand, it's probably going to go right past that first base person. So they're going to want to just take it and toss it. Everybody pretend that you have a dinosaur egg. Okay, you're going to toss it, just toss it to somebody and you don't want them to drop it. So an easy step and toss. And try it with the other hand. Try tossing with the other hand right now. Toss with the other hand. Uh oh. <laughs> All right, have a seat. I'd pick that up, but it looks slow. <laughs> so an anticipatory set is 30 seconds to a minute. It's just getting your kids excited about being engaged in physical activity. When you teach, you want to have your students work on dominant and non-dominant sides. Sometimes they've always been told that they're a right-handed person, and all of a sudden they find out, wow, the physical activity, a left-handed works really good for them. Or sometimes they have your ambidextrous. Um, so that's always something to make sure you're using both sides of your body. So you're going to create an anticipatory set for your activity and then you're just going to uh, give out a quick instructions of how to, how to play your activity. And then again, I'm going to model this for you tonight. Then they're going to be engaged and then they're going to, um, you're going to have a modification that you made from the original activity. Assessment, how do you know they're really learning it? We want to avoid just the busy, happy, good we want to have them at least learn something within that. And then a reflective, cl uh, a reflective closure. 
reinforcing to the students, today we learned about personal space. And we're going to continue working on personal space, and we might make the personal space um, get a little bit more complex. So using a text, uh, the, the, the pages that we have, or any other text that you might have, or website materials, um, and after you see me teaching tonight, you're going to teach a movement activity that only lasts two to three minutes. Really quick. Attention spans are short with, with um, children. To a small group of your class peers, so you're going to, um, it says on your syllabus to submit to titanium, but you're not going to submit to titanium. You're actually going to bring a hard copy in next week. All right, um, no eco-friendliness on this one. You have to bring a hard copy in, okay, because we're, we're going to scan all those. Um, the activity must be inclusive of everyone. All right, so there's no standing out for a long period of time. If I get tagged, I might be frozen for a couple seconds, but then I'm playing again. All right, it's not like sit out in the corner till the game's over. Okay, so make sure it's inclusive. Um, do not teach us sport type drills or relays. And we'll talk about that in just a second. Try to plan on not using any equipment on December 3rd, but you may use equipment on December 10th. December 3rd is all is going to be mostly about locomotor, non-locomotor type movements. Um, so the rules for activity, everyone must be active for the most part, provide feedback while you're teaching, emphasize meaning, uh, meaningful learning environment, and have your kids have fun. Okay. I've provided these resources. This again is posted on Titanium. ActiveLivingResearch.org. You're going to have an assignment to read. There's two documents posted on Titanium from ActiveLivingResearch.org that are, are due for next week with Chapter 4. And PE Central is a great website. It'll give you a gazillion activities. Look in the archives. Try not to just focus on what comes up on the home page because you're probably going to have, everyone will have the same blob tag. Um, so you want to kind of deviate and look deep. PE Universe is actually a video website that shows uh, somebody models how to teach a different activity. So if you're a visual learner and you want to really see how it's taught, how they have the cones set up, um, the classroom. In physical education, we don't generally teach with walls. We teach with cones being our walls. And life skills for kids.com is another website. And then in your syllabus, the content standards are listed. So on your syllabus, it says on the lesson plan, you need to have content standards. I'm going to back off on that and cover the content standards the last night of class. So just use the template that I gave you up above. Okay, so we'll, we'll touch on that a little bit um, a little bit later. Actually, be engaged in that. So this is a list of all the activities we're going to go through in the gym. So we're going to go through these activities. You're going to write them out. You're going to know activities like the back of your hand by the time you get done. Well, we talked about dodgeball, and we, we've talked about other activities such as getting tagged and sitting out for a long period of time. Um, there's some traditional activities, and I'm, I took six of these, and it's from an article that um, it's referenced on the bottom. You're going to read, right now, you're going to read your, the little paragraph of the, of the idea. Uh, whatever the activity is. I have kickball, duck, duck, goose, dodgeball, musical chairs, steal the bacon, and relay races. You're going to read it and you're going to think about what are three pros, what are three cons? Do we want to teach this? Do we not want to teach this? What can we do to teach it? Doesn't mean it's a bad game if we modify it, or maybe it's a fine game with, with how it is. Okay, so I've got to think strategically. We're going to do a jigsaw on this. And I'm going to pass out, I need you to get into a group of six right now. Please get into a group of six. And you need to stand with your group of six. You can stand over a table, do whatever, but you need to be in a group of six. Please hurry. <laughs> Raise your hand, say I need two people or I need one. Quickly, get into groups of six. <laughs> okay, anybody?
everybody not in a group of six? So you have five? You have five? You have five? Okay, one of you come over here. Okay, so that's okay. Everybody needs a group of six, as close as possible. You're five? Okay, so let me have one as a six. Everybody, anybody else a group of five? Everybody six? Yeah, we're not. Wait, wait. She's with you. Oh my goodness.